all love cars for their beauty and performance. But except for guys like these, not everyone really understands what's inside. Is this what you're looking for? Not even close. You could stand over there. Oh, okay, I'll just stand over here. In a way, cell biologists are like auto mechanics. Each cell has an astonishing number of intricate parts, way more than any car. We study what the parts are, how the parts work together, and even which parts of the cell can be left out without causing too much harm. If you understand the inner workings of the cell, you can understand a lot about all living things. What makes them thrive, what makes them fail, and what causes them to evolve. We'll cover more about that later. Right now, I want to look at the topic of complexity. You and I are made of about 40 trillion cells. They comprise every part of our complex human anatomy. But the truth is that we can reduce the number of parts and still have function. If we'd lost an eye, an ear, or a hand, it would be very unfortunate, but our lives could go on. The same applies to this rather complex drill. It has some cool add-ons, but I could take off this battery gauge, or this LED light, or a few other gadgets, and I'd still have a working drill. But how far can I reduce its complexity and not ruin it? I don't want to take apart my drill, so let me move to another example, this mousetrap. The complexity of this machine entails five parts, the platform, the spring, the hammer, the holding bar, and the catch. Now, if I reduce the number of parts from five to four, if I take away the holding bar or the spring or any other part, it wouldn't work. Every part is essential. I call this irreducible complexity. So does this apply to biology too? Do we have examples of irreducible complexity in life? Try this one. Here's a bacterium, a single cell microbe. Some bacteria have a flagellum, which is like an outboard motor on a boat. It rotates to propel bacteria through liquid and it's necessary for their survival in order to swim to search for food. A flagellum has a number of parts, a drive shaft, a universal joint, a rotor, bushings, stator, even a clutch and braking system. The motor of the flagellum has been clocked at 100,000 revolutions per minute. And as with the mousetrap, Removing even one component of this elegant machine destroys its function and renders the bacterium, shall we say, dead in the water. The flagellum is irreducibly complex. Now we know that this was assembled in a factory, but how is the bacterial flagellum developed in nature? Keep in mind, the flagellum is irreducibly complex all the parts have to be in place, or it does not work. Could it have been developed blindly, in stages? Let's say in the distant past, the bacteria first gained a drive shaft. Later on, a rotor, then a stator, and then the rest. Then the parts got in sync as a high-performance engine. The theory of evolution tells us that given enough time, any organic structure we see today, no matter how complex, could have slowly and fully developed by random, unguided forces. We'll come back to the topic of complexity in our next video, which will examine the power of evolution.